This is a photograph I took a couple of summers ago, I think, of um, Western Supermare. You've got Breen down there in the distance. The tide's gone right out, as it often does. And this is um, Nightstone Island and some little figures there having a butcher's over the sea. So let's have a bash at this one. It's all, I shot it sort of into the sun, so it's almost black and white. So I'm going to use a very limited palette like I did yesterday. So let's have a look at the materials. It's all the usual kit, ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. They're all Cutman watercolours squeezed out and let to dry. We got the three brushes, three quarter inch flats on the left, number three rigger in the middle and the large one rants and ache. Got a clean water in our collapsible jar and 15 by 11 cold pressed. Fabriano watercolour paper and on the top there I got me um tea towel drying. So one last quick look and then let's uh, give it a bash. So all I'm gonna use for this one is the raw sienna burnt umber light red and ultramarine and just get sort of various mixes of dark colours in there. So this is just clear water going on with a large Large eight brush. Not sort of overly saturated, but just enough to keep the paper wet for a couple of minutes while I get the sky in. So with that, it's it's now just a uh, no real sort of order to this. Just bash it in, but bear in mind if you're trying to create a sort of light. A light effect so you need when it's down the middle or on one side or even diagonally however you want to do it you need to sort of keep some lighter areas in there um, I mean I always go down let's try let's try and vary it a bit because I, I tend to keep doing the same thing all the time I've got to be careful to try and vary it as much as I can Again, I've just gone straight down the middle, it doesn't matter from there. A few little clouds up there. Just going off into the distance, they obviously get smaller and smaller as they get further and further away. That'll do, I'll keep that sort of just the cloud effect. And again, I'm just going to keep going into this and doing them while the pipe was wet. It's still wet, so as long as it's wet, it's just going to soften off, and I'm not going to get any hard edges. See how these are just softening off on the paper once it starts to dry, you'll get the uh, it's almost sort of like here now. So you can see it's starting to dry up here now. So I'm going to be careful. Um, tissue, a little bit of tissue here. In the photograph, there is a little bit of cloud I can see up the top, a bit of white, white cloud. Um, obviously you don't have to stick them there, you stick the clouds wherever you want. Stick a few white ones over there. Have a couple over there. I'm just looking along it now and I can see the sort of light shining off it, so I know it's still wet. While it's still wet, it's really sort of dark in this bit. So I can see now it's it's just starting to harden these edges, so it's it's definitely drying. I might just leave it at that. Well, we can see how the paper's sort of stretched a little bit, so. It's just a case of pull it tight and refix it so we've got a flat surface to work with again. And then what I'm going to do is just put that in. You just about to see Breen down in the background. So I'm looking where the lighter there is, so I want to sort of go somewhere like that. And it sort of just folds down like that. 
off in the distance. Just make sure that's level with the uh, bottom of the piper. Um, I can't see a reflection in the photo, so I'm not going to bother putting one in. <coughs> you see how it's dried sufficiently enough, so we've got like a hard edge now on the, uh, the land there in the distance. So what I'm going to do next is make sure that's dry. I'm going to move it into the foreground now. Just want to make sure that's bone dry before we carry on. That's all it takes. And then all I've got to do, I can look, I can see the light reflecting off the lamp there, and I can see there's nothing shining, so I know that's dry. I can go like that with confidence. Well, I'm going to get nice and dark now, so I haven't cleaned the brush since I started, and because we're going dark, there's no need to. I'm just dipping the tips in just to bring the hairs together. Let's go in for a really dark mix. Burnt on back. Ultramarine is, is as dark as it gets on my palette. I never just use Payne's Grey. Just mix the two together and you, you're, getting, you're getting virtual black anyway. Right. Um, I'm just wondering to have the, the height of this pea a bit, whether just to have the height of it, the sort of width of the brush, make life a bit easier. I might do that. If we say something like something like there, so that's going to be the corner of the edge of the pier, and then we're sort of coming along like this. And I'm just going to pop that in, just pull it down, and then. But to get this really dark, what I'll do once it's dry, I'll go over it again, go over it again to get it nice and um, nice and dark. Work that along. The paint's not coming off very easy, just dip the tips into the uh, water just to loosen it up. And then should come off a bit easier. I see it like it's just, just getting these white bits. Um, and sort of up there. And then on the left hand side, sort of a bit comes out like that. And it goes down. And right at the very bottom. And then what I might do, I might just switch to the uh, switch to the flats brush. Same mix, burnt umber, ultramarine, and there's like a like a little flag thing there now. And that comes up. So I need a bit more water, it's not coming off the brush very easily, so just dip it in the water just to loosen it up. Loosen it up a bit. Still not coming off, still too dry. Oh, no, that should be alright this time. That's better. It's like a little flagpole thing. And on here we've got our little, our little nails. Just to stop people from falling off or jumping in the water, which people do. 
there's always signs everywhere telling people not to jump in the water. Yeah. Not too much water because I want I want these lines nice and nice and thin. And we've got a like another sort of flag thing up there. What I'm going to do, it's not quite dried, I'm just going to dry this and I'm going to go over it again just to get nice and dark, really dark. So same again, burnt umber, ultramarine. And let's just go over this again. There's no point doing it while it's wet. You're just moving wet paint around. It needs to be dry and just put it on in layers and you can make it as dark as you like. Yeah, I'm just giving over just the same place as I went before. Little bit there in the bottom as well. Just got the rigger here. I've got a little something there on the top. All I've got the brush in. There's a nice, just making sure my hands are dry. Get into this. I'm just going to pop that little bird in. There's a little bird there flying around. In fact, while I've got this rigger brush, I might as well pop these little figures on the top. We go. There's a little people on the top there looking over. And then the one next to him there. And there's a couple more on this side. Basically, what I'm doing is like a little dot, little dot for the head. Let's do another one. This one's like a little kid, little kid looking over the edge. Just like a little dot for the head, and then a sort of general sort of carrot shape underneath. That's all you need. You don't want to mess about with it too much. Um, what we got? Right now, there's sort of a beach. Now let's just do a quick little sweeps now with these beach bits. Like the mud flats there now. Yeah, I'm just using the same two colours. Just really darken it this end. Yeah, just pop in there. These are just like where the uh, bits of mud. Something like that. And then back to the uh, flat brush, and then on the left hand side, we've got a, a couple of little boats there. So one, 
see like the back end of it. Like a little shadowy bit there. Just like the I don't really see much of that, it's off the picture, but now these ones, I'm just making them up now, just imagine like a little, little like rowing boat there sort of thing, and some kind of reflection. I think we're almost done now. Can't see anything else to put in. There is like a foreground, um, like a lamppost. Although I might just leave that out. I don't think that's adding the fat lot to the picture. I think all I'm going to do now is put my name down the bottom. I'll call that one finished. You can do, I suppose, if you want to, just put up a few little, little pebbles and stuff on the beach stones. That's still damp, so I know I can put up a few little stones and stuff. Pebbles there. Just keeping them really small, though. Really small. I mean the ones in the distance, all I'm doing, I'm just tapping the paper rather than scraping them. Just gives a bit of a interest there. I think I'll call that one finished now, so let's have a closer look at it. This is our finished painting, so let's uh, have a look how it compares to the photograph. The main thing about that I like is this contrast, you've got like the dark foreground pier against the bright sky and sort of light shining on the sea. And I've tried to really sort of maximise that contrast, the lightest part of the sky against the darkest part of the foreground here. That's why I tried to get this in as dark as I possibly could so I had maximum contrast with the lighter areas of the sky. The sky was just various mixes, ultramarine, burnt umber, light red mainly, and then a bit of tissue, just to take out the bit of a light cloud, very simple. I was careful to preserve this lighter area, coming down the centre of the screen, and then just brushing in from the sides, make it darker, just helps to emphasise the light. Just a little rigger work, just to put the uh, little people in, just a little dot for their head. And then like a little sort of carrot shape below, just to give the impression of some figures there. And then using the uh, three quarter inch flat, just put the little uh, barriers at the top. And just continued the profile of the pier up to where the buildings are up here somewhere. Got our very simple boats here in the harbour, not forgetting to put in the little reflections. Contrast to the foreground, the background green down was just put in using very light mix. Same same sort of tone as the sky really, just out pushing it right back into the distance. In our foreground shore here, I've just used the uh, corner of the car just to create some pebbles and stones on the beach. Pops them in while it was sort of half dry. I hope you like that, it's my little impression of a um, Nightstone Island uh, down in Western Supermare. Keep practicing, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.